Uh, second leg of the late pick four at Belmont. On Saturday, June 25th, race eight. This is the feature event of the day, the grade two mother goose stakes. And yes, it's just a field of five three-year-old fillies going to mile the 16th on the dirt, which by the way, at Belmont, that's one turn. But Mike, of these five fillies, they're all stakes winners, a couple greatest stakes winners, including Juju's map, who's a grade one winner. And God damn, did she look good when she returned as a three-year-old last out? Yeah, she looked awesome. And we kind of thought we, that, that she had this type of thing in her. And you, you think about her at Del Mar and like, she just didn't really run her race at Del Mar. Echo Zulu was able to get out there and didn't get the pressure we thought was coming from. And that's really the one blemish in her mar in her, her career. And when you look at that, running second in a Breeders' Cup race, really not that big of a blemish. Uh, so it was nice to see her come back and, and excel going that the mile and a 16th. Clearly, that was a prep race for a race like this, right? She didn't really need to run in that, that N2X. And now we're coming jumping way up into grade two. So you got to think that race helped freshen her up. And that Brad Cox was kind of planning this the entire time. We want to get one in her, and then we're going to go right to it to big time graded stakes. And she runs into a field that, let's be honest, isn't that tough here, right? It's a little tough to figure out. And we just talked about the cutting back, stretching out thing. I mean, you've got gerrymander who is stretching out from sprinting, going into the to, going to a one turn graded stakes. You've got Shahama who was just went two turns in Kentucky in the Kentucky Oaks, and now cutting back here to one turn. Uh, so you have a lot of horses that are kind of doing things different here. Quite a few horses coming. Eventy Valentine, the last two, mile and an eighth, and we're cutting back to a one-turn mile and a sixteenth. Just a lot of horses changing what they're doing. And one of the things that, that, I mean, you noted this before the show, the two, the three, the four, and the five have all shown speed at some point in their career. Now, the two is is cheap aqueduct speed, right? When you're going 49, Vente Valentine can make the lead. Midnight Stroll has never been in the lead at the half-mile point outside of Tampa. So I'm not sure how real Midnight Stroll's speed is, right? So that just leaves us with the four gerrymander and the five Juju's map from a speed perspective. And the one is just slow early, right? I think there's really no other way to put that. So <laughs> to me, you kind of can narrow the field down a little bit there. I ended up singling Juju's map here simply because any improvement off that last race is going to be very tough. And I don't think this is what Shahama wants to do, right? I mean, that Shahama would be the horse. I, I went back and forth of like, do I think gerrymander is going to cook Juju's map? Because that's really... There's two scenarios here. Either Juju Smap goes gate to wire, or Shahama cook or gerrymander cooks Jer, uh, Juju's map and Shahama wins, right? I mean, that, that's really the two ways I could see this going. I know you probably have another scenario that you see, but to <laughs> me, I, I think Juju's map gets out, gets loose, and I, I think it's over. And I think if gerrymander sends Juju maps, Juju's map can stalk and beat her. And I don't think Florent Giroux is going to make that critical mistake of saying, I have to have the lead. And because we're breaking from the five, that gives him the decision, right? He's going to be able to see what gerrymander does and decide, do I, if I break clean and I can cross over, great. If not, just sit back and stalk. That's the reason I ended up singling Juju's map was the, actually the post position and how I think Florent Drew can ride, ride the race. Uh, yeah, that's an, I, I went into this fully expecting I was going to single Juju's map. Um, by the way, that, that field that, he beat, that she beat on Churchill Downs, yes, it is allowance race, but it was Kentucky Oaks Day. And there were 10 horses in the race. She was the only one that was three years old. They were all older horses. So not only was that like a, a decent field for her to face for her return from a layoff, they're all older horses too. So uh, the one knock that I really have on her, and this really isn't that much, she's never won at one turn before. So uh, this is going to be a one-turn race, and sometimes that one-turn speed can be a little different. And I went looking to see, like, is there anybody who can beat her? The only horse I think that has a chance in this field really is the Ford gerrymander. Uh, her only poor race in her life came when she was coming from a six-month layoff on Kentucky Oaks Day. Broke like shit. Ran into Matt Araya, who's probably the best one-turn three-year-old filly in the country. Uh, she didn't have a chance from the start, but she wasn't being Matt Araya anyways. She's a horse who was second Echo Zulu in the grade one for Zet, right, you know, before the Breeders' Cup. Uh, she ended up going and winning the Tempted Stakes. And if you look at the field from the Tempted, uh, from Breeders' Cup Weekend at Aqueduct, uh, you had Magic Circle, who ended up winning a Kentucky Oaks Trail Stakes race. Uh, you had Nest, who, by the way, turned into a grade one winner, who was second in the Belmont Stakes. Uh, you had three times second place on the Kentucky Oaks Trail, Goddess of Fire. And then Red Hot Mess was a stakes winner in that race as well. So it, for it being an Aqueduct November Breeders' Cup weekend stakes race, it was actually pretty loaded. Um, I, I have no idea what it's going to take. I don't expect Rosario to send. I don't know what Rosario is going to do. I've kind of given up guessing what he's going to do on a horse like this, but... This is the only one, Mike, that if Juju's map doesn't fire for whatever reason, I think Jerry Manders is the one that can pick her up. Yeah, yeah. The horse shouldn't have any issue with the distance. I mean, like a mile 16 should be no problem for the way this horse is bred. And so that's why it's kind of odd that we haven't seen this horse stretch out past a mile yet. 
I do think the one turn mile in the 16th is helpful. Yep. Um, but it, it, it's really going to be about what Rosario decides to do. The two times he's ridden uh, gerrymander, he's gone 45 and, and I think it's 45 and four both times yep. the opening half mile. So two quick half miles here. I, I think they're definitely going to go slower than that. So if, if Rosario pushes the pace a little bit, he may be able to get away with a 46. But I, again, I don't think Juju's map mind stalking. And that to me was really what pushed me over the edge. Is I, I think Juju's map can sit outside of gerrymander stock and win. I do agree with you. If I'm going to go, like, gerrymander is a horse that logically makes sense if you're going to go too deep here, right? Because the scenario exists where gerrymander gets the lead, Juju's map doesn't press and can't get by, right? And that that to me is, is a like is a way that that, that this race could go. I, the question is if if they're not going that fast, if Venti Valentine or Midnight Stroll get involved, that's why this is such a unique race because you have a clear closer who this race is too short for. You have a clear speed horse, right? And then you have these other three horses that could kind of mix it up. So I, I don't mind you going four or five here. I, I think, the you know, you kind of have to single the one, single the five. You can't use them both. Or you go four or five or one four. And I, I like someone asked about the all button in this. I don't think the two and the three have a legit shot for the price that they will be in this race. Right. I mean, you'd need to give me like 45 to one on the three in this spot. Right. And I don't think you're getting anywhere near that now. You know, we may have 2%, or she may have 2% of the pick four pool tickets on her, which would make her playable at that point. But um, if you have big opinions in other spots that aren't favorites, then I, I think that's the all button is possible here. But to me, like, your most likely outcome here is that the favorite wins, right? And it's it's one of those situations where the all button is most likely going to result in a favorite. And so you really have to make sure you're not playing favorites in the other legs if you are going to try and uh, get lucky and get one of the big numbers to pop. Uh, I'll say it now. Shaham at 9 to 5 morning line. Biggest shock of the day for me at <laughs> horse racing or otherwise, seeing uh, how short of a price she was. Now, I say that if the race completely falls apart and she wins it on Saturday, uh, come back to this and remind me about it. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we're, we're definitely big on Juju's map here. And if you want to go too deep, hey, the four gerrymander with Chad Brown, Joel Rosario. Reminder this episode of the Magic Mike Show, it is brought to you by BetPTC. If you haven't signed up yet, go to betptc.com. It's ADW of the Racing Dudes. Sign up using promo code DUDES, D U D E S. You'll get a $200 new. New member bonus after you bet $750.